this series. I'm Kerry Schertz, the Backyard Professor. I've been asked to present several videos for YouTube on a myriad of subjects. Right now I want to focus on an argument that I believe is very naive and very ignorant. And it's the argument you see being bandied about on the internet that the Book of Mormon has no archaeological and no historical value whatsoever. There's no support for it anywhere. While the Bible has been pretty much fundamentally proven true in our day. And I think both sides of that argument are extremely naive. So what I want to do is I want to present a series of materials on the Book of Mormon that I think are quite remarkable and that soundly refute that naive argument that there's nothing in favor of it, especially archaeologically, while the Bible has been proven. It's a false argument. Let's start with the Book of Mormon. I'm going to start right on the first page, the very first page of the Book of Mormon. I'm going to go to the second verse in First Nephi. Yea, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. So if Joseph Smith was making this thing up, as it happens, he just picked the two most important cultural contexts, the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians, that he could have. Because we know based on the archaeological and historical records that have come out now, especially with the Telerad Ostracon, that the commingling of the Jews and the Egyptians was very powerful just before Nebuchadnezzar marched down from Babylon, wiped out Jerusalem, and took the Jews captive into Babylon. Took them back over across the river. John Twentness and Stephen D. Ricks, two of my very favorite scholars, in the Journal of Book of Mormon Studies, this is volume 5, number 2, for 1996, in their article, Jewish and Other Semitic Texts, written in Egyptian characters, they describe several situations historically with various different types of uh, archaeological discoveries that the Book of Mormon indicates it was being written using Egyptian characters. Mormon called it Reformed Egyptian in Mormon chapter 9. This is on page 156, 57, 58, 59, so on and so forth. On page 158, both the Hieratic and the demotic forms of the Egyptian language were in use in Lehi's day. This is 600 B.C. in Jerusalem area. And it can properly be termed Reformed Egyptian. They were a number of Northwest Semitic texts are included in Egyptian magical papyri, which is very interesting. These are mostly incantations that, instead of being translated, have been transcribed in the Egyptian hieratic. The underlying language is a Northwest Semitic tongue, however, an early form of Hebrew Canaanite language. On page 159, they say, The Israelites adopted the Egyptian hieratic numerals and mingled them with the Hebrew text. I'm just summarizing their argument briefly because I have to make a short video. On page 161, they note that an ostracon that was found at Telerad in 1967, mind you, 1967, this shows that the text is written in a combination of Egyptian hieratic and Hebrew characters. But this can only be read entirely as Egyptian. Very interesting, isn't it? On page 162, they notice this. Oh, and this is Shlomo Yevon's article. I have this article. I went and photocopied about six or seven of these articles that they have because these supposedly paid Mormon apologists who just seem desperate to come up with evidence. No, they're actually using their sources correctly. I have several of these sources. Yevon's article, An Ostracon from Telerad, exhibiting a combination of two scripts. This was out of the Journal of Egyptian Archaeology for August 1969, pages 98 to 102. Yevon's article is interesting. The scribe who wrote the text at Telerad knew both languages, the Hebrew and Egyptian writing systems. And what he did is he commingled them in a single text. Then finally, to sum up their argument on page 163, 
they say at both Telerad and Kadesh Barnea there were additional combination texts of these two languages discovered on Ostraka written entirely in either Hebrew or in the Egyptian Hieratic. Telerad is in the Jerusalem area. The implication is clear. Scribes or students contemporary with Lehi were being trained in both Hebrew and the Egyptian writing systems. The use of Egyptian script by Lehi's descendants now becomes not only plausible, but perfectly reasonable in the light of archaeological discoveries made more than a century after Joseph Smith translated the Book of Mormon. Of all the ancient cultures that Joseph Smith had to put together this made-up book, the Book of Mormon, supposedly made-up book, he picks the two correct cultures, the Hebrew and the Egyptian, and he shows they were mingling together with their languages as well as their culture. This is precisely what the archaeological materials of both the Egyptian and the ancient scripts being found in archaeological sites surrounding Jerusalem and the Jerusalem area to the north, over on the east and the west side, all the way down in the south. So, what this archaeological information does is it shows that this naive argument that there's absolutely nothing archaeological or historical for the Book of Mormon, that argument is simply false.